I think we've learned by now that the Commonwealth takes no prisoners, though it's been out for a good year and some Fallout 4 <laughs> never changes. Beginning one of the most requested videos on our channel since the past year, here are 8 more of the scariest locations in the Commonwealth we dare you to dig up. Even before the Great War, Mr. Wayne Gorski was a bit of a nutcase and had trouble hiding the tinfoil hat on his head. After an electrical tower was stationed near his house, his conspiracy compass went off the charts thinking that it was some sort of strange mind control device in disguise of an electrical tower. Just telling by where the cabin is located, it looks like he's a personal fan of living off the grid. So when the tower was constructed out of nowhere, his concerns were reasonable. Taking personal offense to the tower, Gorski decided to construct a little device of his own. He planned to build a mini nuke that would break apart the tower. And when you go inside, you can even scavenge the remnants of the failed creation. At his side was a terminal he used to track his progress, not with building the bomb, but to track how long he could stay under wraps from his big brother government. This convalescent home is a Western Salem retirement home that houses some pretty wicked and sometimes disheartening imagery. Mr. Handy robots are still cycling through their chores and caretaker agendas, perpetually stuck in a loop of caring for their patients and the elderly inside the home. Thing is, all of the residents in the home have long since deceased and are now only decomposing corpses. Not only deceased, but even more eerily have been posed and displayed as though they were acting out a scene from their life in which they were alive. A stark, expressionless face forever frozen on their lifeless bodies. Visiting some of the rooms, you'll see some of the residents lying in bed surrounded with the objects and lifestyles that they were enamored with during their life. Some rooms have cats, plants, and whimsical visions of the beach pleasantly filling the room. If you remember happening upon Vault 106 from Fallout 3 and observing the many visions and hallucinations that the location had in store for its intruders, you may be sensed with familiarity when entering the Hallucigen Inc. building featuring an impressive display of non-lethal pre-war weaponized gas. The company produced hallucinatory gases and fumes to suppress enemies. A considerable portion of the noxious fumes withstood the nuclear catastrophe and now have leaked all through the building, giving any intruder a nice acid trip or two upon entry. One side effect of the gases, of course, insinuated by the company is hallucinations and palpable dilutions. Which is why when you enter the facility, gunners and raiders are seen fighting nothing. A room will greet the player with an announcement, try some products, to find out that all of these gases and devices were actually being sold to investors. <laughs> Bastards. The Federal Surveillance Center can be found just on the brink of the map before delving into the deeper crevices of the glowing sea. The surveillance center provided safety and security against nuclear bomb threats for surveillance experts to continue to gather information on people even after the war. As you explore around, the first thing you may pick up on is that the bunkers were not adequately stocked with provisions or even properly sheltered like employees were promised. One holotape in particular follows the testimony of Buzinski an employee that watched his own best friend get atomized and ripped to shreds by the blast because he wasn't able to make it into the bunker in time. This is government employee number 011. Uh, screw this government bullshit. This is Bizensky. The story surrounding the decline of the surveillance center is shrouded in obscurity and a little bit of sadness as well. The Concord Speakeasy is an unmarked location on the map of the Commonwealth, but that's not to say this little place didn't have some disturbing imagery. There isn't much other than lootables and the occasional day tripper bottle, a rare chem in Fallout, but one scene in particular always had people raising some concerns with what may have happened here three mannequins holding machetes and other various bathroom appliances, like a plunger, not sure why, are surrounding a beheaded corpse in the bathtub. 
Maybe just one of the Concord citizens exercising their demented sense of humor, or maybe the subject matter of how everything got here is much darker. You aren't offered a lot of context to put the pieces together, just a skeleton with his life being threatened by a bunch of mannequins. The Finn Street sewer houses one of many deranged serial killers in the Commonwealth. Appropriately labeled the Finn's Phantom, this killer has transformed his entire living space into a menagerie of terrible attractions. The sewer looks less like a sewer and more like a horrific funhouse designed to scare unwanted visitors and dissuade them from attacking. Some of his victims have been beheaded and their heads replaced with animal skulls, some chained up in dog cages and treated like beasts. Following the holotapes of the killer, the Finn's Phantom becomes extremely interested in the detective pursuing him and would like to add him to his collection of horrors. This, of course, led to the killer's predictable and long-awaited death. Speaking of serial killers, Pickman's gallery hosts a diverse array of unsettling imagery as well. After killing and mutilating the corpses of his victims, he paints highly suggestive artworks in their blood. The lore behind the gallery derives inspiration from Pickman's model, a Lovecraftian short story because eh, why the hell not? The gallery itself is hard to miss, what with its bright red door highlighting the entrance. You'll find an entire squadron of raiders turning over every desk and canvas trying to snuff this guy out. I guess the raiders don't carry much respect for serial killers who kidnap their friends and gut them alive all for the sake of his art. Pickman tantalizes his guests by leaving notes around his house saying things like, Pickman was here, come find me if you dare, with the signature bloody heart taking up most of the message. You can also find Pickman's blade, a rare legendary weapon in the room of the killer. The Parsons State Insane Asylum, built by the Cabot family, has admitted both stable and sinister patients of the like, and it's actually one of the only buildings left in the Commonwealth still being patrolled with a bit of organization. Not the usual shoot-on-sight reactions we're accustomed to, thanks to the raiders. The architecture of the asylum is beautiful and off-putting. Pre-war life at the asylum wasn't that much more outlandish than it is currently. Some patients gleefully admitted themselves in, confessing to horrid crimes. Lorenzo Cabot, one of the overseers of the construction of the building, explored the lost city of Ubar and he returned with an esoteric artifact that he claimed gave him supernatural abilities beyond anything that anyone has ever seen. His son ended up admitting him into the asylum for the safety of himself and his loved ones. If you missed the Death Garage or the Dunwich Borers, I might suggest our original Top 5 Creepy Locations video for Fallout 4. We have a few locations you may not have seen during the length of this video, so I recommend giving it a watch. Educate someone and share this video with a friend. Until next time.